you all today um, about what's been on my mind and heart. I am doing good. Um, progress supports are due. And um, I was supposed to go live yesterday, but I didn't. So here I am. Hey, Miss Keisha. How are you doing? Um, I'm just going to start talking now. Okay. So, uh, I really love this song. Y'all have not listened to it. It's very encouraging. I pray for you. You pray for me and watch God change things. It's really important that, um, not only during this season, but in life, I can say for me, every time I needed help, every time I was going through something, um, the older folks would always say, go pray about it. Go pray about it. And it's like, I don't want to pray about it. I don't want to pray about it. But I can say in this season, let me take this gum out of my mouth. Cause I ain't gonna be able to talk during this season. Um, and just in life in general, prayer is really important. Hear me? Prayer is really important. Um, why it's very important because it keeps you. And the thing about it is, as you get closer to God through your prayer, you'll begin to see the stuff that you're looking for comes through prayer. Let me turn this down because now the baby starts screaming. Um, the things that you're needing, the things that you're wanting. Um, I was reading a book, Women, by um, Dr. Miles Monroe, and he talks about how um, if a car is broken, and you need to try to find out how to fix the car. 
how do you find out how to fix the car? No one? Okay. Um, you need to fix a car, you go to the manufacturer. You look at the book, you go through the book, and you look through the book and see, okay, how to fix this exhaust manifold. I only know it because D. But um, you need to go and fix the exhaust manifold, if I'm saying it correctly. You go fix that. How? By looking at the manufacturer. You go to the person that created the car to figure out, how do I get this car fixed? You go to the creator of the car, the manufacturer, to figure out, how do I drive the car? How do I do this? Because if you go to someone else who did not, who did not create the car, you run into a problem. And that's what we do a lot of times. We decide, oh, no, I don't want to pray. Instead, I'm going to call my friend. Instead, I'm going to call my mom. I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to call someone else besides going to God in prayer. Because growing up, as you begin to grow, and I know a lot of us are in our 20s, 30s, and so forth. Um, we rely on someone that's older than us. But what about that? those times when God says, I want you to do this? And nobody agrees. Nobody agrees. Well, guess what? If you are trying to figure out who you are, if you're trying to figure out your purpose in life, if you're trying to figure out what is going on in the season, you're trying to figure out how to pay bills, you're trying to figure out how to handle your kids, how to handle your spouse, you go to the one that created them. You go to the one that created your spouse. You go to the one that created the children. And that's God. And God is the only one that can help you during that time. How do you go to God? You go to God in prayer. And um, another thing I want to say is, even when you go to prayer, through prayer, supplication, meditation, a lot of times you can go to him, pray a little bit, and just be in his presence without even saying much. Because if you are... Um, shouting is good. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're shouting, we're yelling, we're screaming, we're running around. How can we hear God? You can't hear God with being so loud. Even when you pray, I say, oh, hallelujah, God, we thank you for this day. We give you glory, God. We give you honor. I pray right now, Lord God, that you be just begin to rebuke that thing, Lord God. I pray right now, God, that you begin to heal families, men families. Da, 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 da. I begin to say all this stuff like that. How can I hear God? And then I leave my prayer. I leave shouting and screaming and all of that. And then my prayer still isn't answered. So then what do I do? I go to somebody and I try to confide in them. I'm having this problem. I'm having this issue. How do I get over it? You don't know. But you got to go to the creator. And when you go to the creator, he'll give you the answers that you need. It may not be in the time. Um... Yes, I just wanted to say that. Another thing, um, one of my favorite scriptures, and overall, I kind of want to just talk about burdens, um, purpose, just different things like that. Just follow along. I'm just going to just be talking. Um, so, also maturity. Um, I've been through a lot of things. You know, we all have from January into now. 2020 was like, oh, wow, all this stuff is unexpectedly. So, um, one of my favorite scriptures is comes from 1 Corinthians 9 and 19. And everybody know I love this scripture. Um, Paul's, Paul is talking about his use of freedom. So it began saying, Though I am free and belong to no one, I made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. 20 says, To the Jews, I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am under the law. Hi, everyone that's joining. Um, so I could win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, to, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that I'm so that by all things means I might save some. Hi, thank you all for joining. Um, I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in his blessings. So going back to prayer and now I'll talk about the scripture going back to prayer. We go. We pray, Lord, I pray for my family. God, I pray that you mend this person. God, I pray that you help my family member get off drugs, right? 
Well, we go to pray. God shows us the end of a thing, right? So we know, oh, you're going to heal my family because you've already told me that you're going to do it. The thing about it is we do not know from point A to point B. We don't know what we're going to have to go through. He didn't tell us that. So what we have to do when we go and pray, it says you believe what you prayed about. That means when I get in the midst of the trial, when I am getting almost to point B, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God because better is the end of a thing than the beginning. A lot of us want to be used by God. A lot of us want to have ministry. You know, everybody want to be a prophet, but um, I ain't going to get there. But um, a lot of us have ministry in us. But the thing about it is, how are you going to minister to somebody Hey, Marquita, how are you going to minister to somebody if you don't go through nothing? Hmm? How are you going to minister to somebody? How are you going to help somebody? So this is why Paul says, I became weak so that I can minister to the weak. So the situation that you're going through right now, don't look at what's going on right now. Look at and think about, okay, what is it that I prayed about? What is it that I prayed about? Okay, God, you said you was going to heal my family member from cancer. Right? Or whatever it is that you're going through. You tell God, God, I need you to do this. You have to trust him. Through that time, you got to trust him and believe that it's going to come to pass. And when you get in the storm, hey, Miss Phyllis, when you get in the storm, trust the process. We hear that all the time. Trust the process. Even and a lot of times we pray for somebody else. And if we're focused on that other person getting healed, that other person getting delivered, it's something that's going to come from us, too. We're going to have to change in some way. And in order for us to change, we have to be hurt. We have to be crushed. We have to be bruised. If Christ bear the cross alone and all the world go free, if there's a cross for Jesus, surely there's a cross for me. So if we say that we want to be Christians, we say that we want to follow Christ. That means everything that he went through, if God wants to make us like him, we're going to have to go through some of those very same things. When we go through trials, we go through circumstances. We don't realize the strength that we have until we come out of it. We have to be weak. We hear it. I've heard it all the time. I posted something on my Instagram page, I think, um, yesterday that talked about when you are called, you're going to have to go through some things. So we can't, we can't say, whoa, me, we have to say, why not me? Why not me? How are you going to minister to somebody if you don't go through nothing? That's why it's a lot of people out here. You can tell, you can tell the ones that are, um, that are um, that very egotistical and they got a lot of pride and stuff like this. And they try to minister to people, but you can't reach anybody. You can't reach anybody if you were not burdened down from that thing. So if I was sick, oh, best believe I got a testimony to tell somebody that I was sick. And a lot of times, um, even in the Bible, when, when Christ died, I think it was James, I think, um, he was like, I don't believe it. I got to put my hands in his side. I got to actually see the, um, his pierced hands. A lot of times people need to see that stuff. But when you go and say, my God is a healer. Why? My God is a healer because he healed me. But, oh, we don't want to go through nothing. We don't want to go through nothing, but how are we going to help people if we don't go through anything? You became weak so that you can minister to the weak. You realize what your burden is by what troubles you the most. So don't be embarrassed by your past. Hey, Joe, don't be embarrassed by your past. Don't be embarrassed by what you're going through right now. Know that it is not permanent, that it is only a season, that it will soon change. And while you're in your season, make sure that the seeds that you are sowing is being fertilized on good ground. Do not sow seeds of discord because that's what you're going to reap. Do not sow seeds of 
maliciousness because that's what you're going to get. You so, don't sow seeds of jealous, um, jealousy. Don't sow seeds of anger. Even if I do not feel this way, I'm going to make myself. In my last in my last live, I was talking about training your mind, rerouting your mind. However you want to feel, reroute your mind. Okay, this is not going good right now, but I woke up today. I'm in a good mood today. That's how it has to be. Reroute your mind. And I promise you, when you go through that trial, when you go through that situation, God will give you a new perspective. And people will be wondering, your situation hasn't changed. When you first got in it, you was telling everybody you was about to commit suicide. When you first got in it, everybody knew you was in that situation. But, oh, the reason why is because I started praying. I started believing God and taking my mind off of the situation and looking at the bigger picture. He's making me more like Christ. Sorry, I went to Chick-fil-A. He's making me more like Christ. We have to die to ourselves daily. Daily, I die to myself. Because a lot of times we can be mad, especially if you're like in a relationship or a friendship. You can be mad at people. But, oh, let the table turn. Hey, Jeremiah, let the table turn around and God show you who you are. Let the table turn around. So this whole time, look at yourself. This is the time to be examining who you really are. You examine who you really are, and that's going to work through prayer. Um, Bishop Plowden told me, he said, if you go to God and you're trying to pray and you're angry, you're not going to hear from God. If you want something to change, you got to release that anger. Hey, Jeremiah, you got to release that anger from you because you won't be able to hear from God. So if it's like, oh, God, this person did this and this person at my job did this and I can't stand them because this, 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 this. Just take a moment and stop, breathe and look at yourself because you will surely find out, which I did, all my mistakes, the things that I need to change about myself. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. Um, what's the next topic? Galatians. Galatians 6 and 1. It goes right into it. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and one in the meekness, in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So if you see your brother, if you see your sister sinning, okay, you see them being overtaken in a fault. If you are more spiritual, restore mm -hmm. them. I got a text message. Restore them. And you restore them in meekness. It's not, oh, you going to hell. Or, oh, why are you always doing that? Why are you always doing that? I don't know about y'all, but when I was doing my own thing and somebody came to me telling me when I was wrong, it make you want to do it more. Am I right? When you know somebody coming to you and they just judging you, it's going to be like, oh, you can't tell me what to do because you're doing this. But if somebody come to you in meekness, if somebody come to you in love, it makes you want to, oh, wow, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing love. I'm missing peace. I'm missing joy. And then all of that goes right back to God. So if you know that your brother, your sister, they doing whatever it is that they doing, go to them in love. And then when you go to them, that does not mean, oh, I'm going to go to you. Then I'm going to make sure I tell this person, oh, yeah, you know, I, was, I had to help her out because she was doing this because he was doing this. No. You go to them in love. And then it says, lest thou also be tempted. So you have to think that that my, my brother, my sister is being overtaken by a fault. There's something, you know, whatever is going on. I have to go to them in love because I may be overtaken by a fault tomorrow. I may fall into temptation tomorrow. So that's why we all have to make sure that we're coming together. Um, another thing I want to talk about was um, maturity. We do not want to go through the fire, y'all. A lot of us do not want to go through trials. And that was definitely me. I did not want to go through no trial. I didn't want to go through no, um, I didn't want to go through no trial. I didn't want to go through no storm. I was like, oh, no, everything good. 
oh, you you say I'm called. I don't want to hear that. I'm going to stay over here. I'm going to do my own thing. But, oh, when you got a calling on your life and when God call you, you're going to be the one. All your friends are still candy at the stove, but you're going to be the one that get caught. All your friends. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so true. I remember when I was a kid and I was with um, my cousins. And I don't know if y'all remember in Walgreens. They used to have like those little gummy bears and stuff like that. They used to be like five and ten cent. Uh, that's how I still, I feel still do though. For real, for real. Everybody else, I promise you, everybody else would be getting away with it. Everybody else would be getting away with it. Hey Al, everybody else would be getting away with whatever it is. So it's like, oh shoot, they doing it. I'm gonna do it too. You know, I'm about to, I'm about to have my fun too. But no, when you call, you gonna be the one that get caught. All your business gonna get, all your business gonna go out there. You want to know why? Because when you are called and when you are chosen, God is gonna do what He has to do to get your attention. If that means that you have to lose somebody, if that means that you got to have a breakup, if that means that you got to lose your best friend that you've had for twenty five years, when you got to call it on your life, hey girl, how you doing? When you got to call it on your life, God will remove any and everybody out your life. If that means you got to get locked up, but oh man, you know, my homie was selling, I'm going to use weed as, as an example. My homie selling weed, he been selling weed for, tw for 10 years. I sell it one night and I get caught. That's how it is because if you got a calling on your life, God is going to do what he got to do. He going to remove who he got to remove. Whoever it is, that's what he going to do. And the thing about it is, our life is not our own. Why are we here? We're only here temporarily. We are here to do whatever God has called us to do. And I can definitely tell you this. If you are running, because I was running for a long time. If you are running from your calling, if you are running from your assignment, you're going to always feel like you are in the belly of a whale. You're going to be like Jonah. Jeremiah, you funny. Um, you're going to always feel like you are in the belly of the whale. You are going to feel like you can't. Hey, Miss Barbara. Prophetess, um, you're going to always feel like you can't get no sleep. You can't eat. You're going to feel like that money falls through your hands. You, gonna, you ain't going to be able to keep no job. Because when you are called, you are called. And you're going to always feel like you are being tormented. Because God has a time, a season for everything. If God knows that you're supposed to meet somebody in five years, why are you stepping on my toes? I don't like you anymore. I'm not. I'm just trying to show what God has been. Look, I've been here. The scripture I said, I became weak so I can minister to the weak. I'm only telling you stuff that I had to. Look, I was running for a long time. I was trying to do what I want to do for a long time. Everybody else not getting caught, but Jatera get caught. Jatera business go everywhere. Okay. Well, probably not my business go everywhere. But y'all understand what I'm saying. The point is God going to make sure that he gets your attention. So if, um, Hey, um, auntie, um, um, yeah, but when you are called, you're just that you're just called. And because our life is not our own, we're never going to be able to sleep where it's nowhere that you can run. So if you feeling like, Oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm not going, I'm gonna do this. And nobody ain't got to know God gonna know. And I'm one thing I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all the prayer I've prayed. I said, Lord, I Lord, Lord Jesus, like, Lord Jesus, you know, me and you, we cool. You know, this is this is a real prayer. God, you know, we cool, you know. Um, I pray you expose that person, expose everything, Lord, but keep me here and keep me here and God. Don't, 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 uh-uh, you know, like keep that stuff hidden from me. No, because if I was called, God has to do what he has to do to get my attention. And we also got to be careful. Because the things that we do, if the devil knows, like, oh, she ain't doing what she doing? Oh, she ain't praying no more? Oh, she ain't doing this no more? Oh, let me just go ahead and just step right in. And before you know it, God right here, you right here. And before you know it, you start doing this. God ain't moving, but this is what you start doing. Now, God gives us grace and mercy. But before you know it, you be further away. Trying to figure out how you're going to get back. But God will still find a way when you are called. God is going to get what he needs to get. 
Think about the more you run, how many more people. Hey, I'm um, pastor. Think about the more, the more you run. Think about the more deaths that are taking place. And I'm not talking about deaths naturally. I'm talking about deaths in the spirit, the assignments. God assigns us to people. And because we are running away, we are missing the assignment to help somebody, to save somebody, to help deliver them because I'm focusing on myself, but my life is not my own. My life is not my own. So while I'm killing people spiritually because I'm not there to pray for them, I'm not there to walk in my anointing, walk in my calling, whatever your anointing is. While I'm not there, they're slowly dying, dying even more. And because they're dying, it's that, oh, their blood is on whose hands? It's on my hands. So not only am I dealing with me dying spiritually, but it's also everybody else that's supposed to be connected to me, but I won't fall in line with God. So I won't see the salvation of the Lord. Another thing, y'all. Control. Stop trying to control your life. Stop trying to control that situation. Stop trying to control and say, these are my children. So I'm going to make sure they do this. I'm going to make sure they do this. No, he says, train up a child. You train them. You don't control them. The same thing if you got a spouse. The same thing trying to control people on your job. No, you can't control anything. You can't control anything. Stand still and wait upon God. Because one thing that I've noticed, I've been trying to control my life for so long. Every time that I try to control my life, nothing goes right. But the moment that I said, God, my life is not mine. I belong to you and to you only. Oh, I wrote down breaking the cycle. I belong to you and you only. And I really say, God, I take my hands off of it. I've begun to see change. I've begun to, when I surrendered everything, I have peace. And my sister's on here. She can say it. Yeah, I have peace. I have joy. I have love. My situation has not changed. My situation has not changed. But what has changed is my perspective. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not doubt him. Because what the devil does, when you when you overcome, when you come out of something, the devil is still there. He's like, okay, let me try this. Okay, let me try this. Why are you moving away from your sin? Why are you moving away from your struggle? Let me try this. Let me try this. So what you got to do, you got to get in the word. In my room, I have scriptures all around my room. Because when you come out of sin, when you come out of something, it's a fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hey, Desiree. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But what we do wrestle is things in high places. What we do wrestle, all of this is a spiritual battle. So that's why it says put on the whole armor of God. That includes his word. That includes protecting your mind. Bless, breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. I can't talk. Breastplate of righteousness. That means all of that. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? What is a sacrifice? That means this is something that I want, but God, I'm going to give it to you. So, oh man, that means that if I present my body as a living sacrifice, that means that I'm not dead. So I'm not in death and death is sin. Sin is death. That means that I'm going to, Present my body a living sacrifice. So the things that I want to do with my body, I'm going to say no. I'm going to tell my flesh no. Oh, that's hard. That's hard, right? That's very hard. Um, another, I wrote on my, I wrote on my, um, I wrote on my Instagram post. I said, don't allow people to label you. Do not allow people to label you. People will label you because they know what your family is connected to. Which, you know, that deals with generational curses and this, that, and the other. But when God created you, he created you for yourself. That does not mean, that, does, that, that means that if you have a twin, 
you are still separate from your twin. Do not let people label you. Do not let people put directions and tell you how you how you supposed to be. Oh, your mama was like this, so you're going to be like this. Your dad is like this, so you're going to be like, no, you better break that generational curse. Don't let people put a stigmatism on you. You are your own creature. You're going to do what God has called you to do. Tell them, you cannot label me. I am delivered. You're delivered from depression. Hey, cuz. You're delivered from depression. You are delivered from bondage. You are delivered from limitations. Don't let people put limitations on you because you serve a God that is limitless. Okay. My whole family may have been in poverty. I'm not, the stuff that I'm saying are examples. Okay. Don't think that this stuff is real. Um, well, some of it is, but not all of it. Um, you are, um, my whole family dealt with poverty. Yes. I'm connected to my family, but I'm my own person. Don't let people label you. You are your own person. Do not let people label you. Do not let people label you. It does not matter if you're the same person. If you sinned yesterday, brand new, more, brand new mercies every day. Don't let somebody label you from your past. Because people will do that. God will forgive you and people will continue to bring up your past. Don't let that stuff get in your mind. Do not let that stuff get in your mind. Don't let that stuff get in your mind because the moment that you feel like you got peace, the moment that you feel, Ooh, everything is just so good. That goes the devil. Or that goes somebody that being negative. No, you train your mind during this time. You train your mind. My situation is not going to change, but you know, what's going to change. My mindset going to change. My mindset going to change. That's what's going to change. My mindset going to change. So let me speak life to you. Whew. Be encouraged, okay, y'all? Be encouraged. Um, last thing that I want to talk about was burdens. Um, ooh, burdens. Mm, burdens, burdens, burdens. God will put a burden on you because it's a message in that burden. Oh, GRO is coming. Um, there's a message in that burden. You realize, um, look at the stuff that really troubles you. The stuff that really troubles you, the burdens that you have on you, they are for you. That means when God puts that burden on you, you need to immediately begin to pray. Immediately begin to pray and figure out why is this burden on me? Because you will notice you're the only one. You'll be the only one that's like, why isn't this right? Everybody else okay with it. Or you'll have people tell you, get, stop talking to people. Okay. Stop talking to people because when God put that burden on you, he put that assignment on you. He did not put that assignment on your daddy. He did not put it on your mama or your best friend on whoever. God put that assignment on you. So nobody is going to understand that assignment. Nobody is going to understand that burden. You go to God in prayer and ask God, God, you put this burden on me. What are you trying to say? What do you want me to do? He put that burden on you. Hey, G Rose. Hey. Want to say hey to my life? Say hey to my life. This is my little cousin. Say hey. Hey. She don't say hey. But, um... Yeah, when God put that burden on you, he put that burden on you. He did not put it on nobody else. Like I said, God is the manufacturer. He is the creator. So if you are trying to figure out what your purpose is, Jasmine said, hey. Juju said, hey. You trying to figure out what your purpose is, what your calling is, what your assignment is. And let me say this. Mama. Get your. You got to open your mouth again. Oh. When God puts that burden on you, I forgot what I just said. She's so cute. Um, when God put that burden on you, he put it on you. Don't go to other people asking other people what you should do. Now you have, you know, um, you have the elders. But even if your elders telling you something that God did not tell you, 
You better listen to God because he's the creator. He created you. He created you. And it doesn't matter how prophetic, it doesn't matter how wise they are. It does not matter how wise they are. You better do what God said. Okay? Um, from a burden comes pain. So understand that we may hurt. We may be in pain. That does not mean that it's not of God. Okay? Joseph had to go be betrayed by his brothers. He had to go to jail from what Bishop um, Ross was telling us. He had to endure so much. And everybody else in the Bible had to endure so much. But they went through pain. They had burdens. They had all of that stuff so they could get to their promise. So the moment that you receive a prophecy, the moment that you receive somebody saying, oh, you're going to get this, you're going to get that. The moment that you receive any type of word, even if it's from God, you need to immediately get down and pray. Because it's going to take something to get to that promise. You said, God, can this cup pass over? Can this cup pass over? Lord, do I got to go through this? Can I just skip right to the blessing? It don't work like that. So be encouraged as you begin to go through 2020. More things are going to happen. It's going to be more problems. You're going to feel pressured. What is it? Um, perplexed. Y'all know. I'm not destroyed. I can't even think of it. I got to say it. Let me look it up. Come on now. Um, um, that's what I said. She tried to call you. I call her back. Okay. We are pressed on all sides, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. That means we're going to feel pressure on us, but it's not going to be a crushing. You're going to feel pressure. Okay. As you begin to go through this time, this is when we begin to mature in God. This is when we begin to mature in God. I am going to be pressed. God is going to have to. I'm going to be hurt. I may feel broken. I may go through depression. I may go through sadness. I may go through loneliness. They're all emotions. And the heart is deceitfully wicked. And a lot of times we can be feeling like we're, we can feel like we're sad. And a lot of times it ain't even like that. Because at the moment you can feel sad. This is, this is in a, in a typical hour. Okay. You'll be feeling sad. Somebody call you. Then all of a sudden you happy. Then somebody call you next and then you be mad. And then somebody call Life is just like that. But you have to, when you put the word in your, you have that word in your heart, that means it does not matter what happens. Like Job, Job lost everything, but he, sin, he did not sin. He did not sin. He did not sin. That means that when you go through everything, God is testing you. God is putting you through trials to make you better so that you can receive what he has for you. Stay strong. You fight in prayer. Fight in prayer. This is what's going to cause you to mature. This is what's going to cause you to get more wisdom. Okay? You're going to get more wisdom through trials. Right? You know, when you start from elementary school and you go to middle school, you go to high school. Each level is different. You're going to go to higher heights. You're going to go deeper devil, deeper depths. That means God knows you. He knows what he has to do to get your attention. If you are running from God, he knows what he has to do. Yes, Jasmine, fight in prayer. He knows what he has to do to get your attention. So if you are running from God and you feel like, why well, I got to go through this? Why I got to go through that? Guess what? You will continue to go through it. Because guess what? I'm a witness. Okay? I am a witness. I am a witness. I'm telling y'all everything that, that has been going on. But when you get to that point where you say, it does not matter. For God I live and for God I die. Because at the end of the day, it's all this temptation in the world. But I don't want to win everything here and lose my soul. I don't want to have everything here. I don't want to be lukewarm. I'm going to church. I'm a minister. I'm a prophetess. I'm a, 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 um, a archbishop of the whatever. And do you still go to hell? You might as well just go and just sell your soul. You might as well just, I mean, really think about it. 
Don't allow the devil to trip you up like that. To make you feel like God don't love you. Because you are going through trials. Because you are going through testimony, um, trials, tests, all of that. That means that God loves you. Because he wants to see you grow. He don't want to see you in the same place. God loves you just that much. To do what he has to do to get your attention. He loves you that much. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. You love me that much that out of all these people in the world, you're going to cause me to go through stuff so that I can get my attention so that I can be in heaven. He loves you that much. He loves you that much to give you brand new mercies, grace and mercy every day. I know my daughter didn't do right yesterday. I know my son did not do right yesterday, but I'm going to give her another opportunity to get it right. He continues to wake us up. That means that there is more for you to do. There's more for you to do. There's more for you to grow. But you're not going to grow. You're not going to grow if you don't go through nothing. If everything is just straight and you have lollipops and rainbows and all that stuff like that, you're not going to change. Let's just be honest. The, the only way that we really get close to God is when, when something traumatic happens. When something traumatic happens, oh, Lord, I need to pray. I need to pray. Oh, you got this pandemic going on? People that don't pray, oh, Lord, I need to pray. Oh, I'm going to go to church as soon as something happens. God knows. He knows us already. He knows us already. He knows what he has to do to get our attention because he does not want us to go to hell. And it's sad that hell enlarges itself daily. Straight and narrow is the way. He knows that we're not going to be perfect. That's why he gives us brand new mercies. Every day. God loves you. God loves you. And if you do not know Christ. 